Monica and I are out here on the beach on a secret mission tonight. Hi. We're seeing if we can catch some grunion. Grunion are a little smelt that wash up certain times of the year on the beach to lay their eggs. And right now, it's the perfect time to get them. I've been sharing some information online about the grunion runs and, uh, you know, Leroy's saying, well, you're sharing it, so let's go do it. And so the other night, we made the decision to to make a run down south from where we live. It's always around either a new moon or a full moon. So that's when the tide is highest. And so you can actually go to the Fishing Game website and they will actually tell you what the predicted runs are. Um, the second and third day, it's always a four days of the run. The second and third day of each one is the best time that's in the middle. So it's gonna be closed now. Actually, it is closed for the months of April and May. So you can go to the beach and observe, but you can't, touch, you can't harass them, you can't take them. We finally did get to that time. We went out there. We waited, stood for quite a while. And waited. Yeah, yeah, for about an hour and a half. They move like eels on top of the sand and the water, so you gotta move quick to get them, because the only way you can grab, the only way you can take them is by hand. You can't dig a hole in the sand to trap them. You can't use a net or anything. You can't use any kind of barrier to hold them from going back into the water. You just gotta run up onto them and grab them as fast as you can with your hand, and they are not, they are not easy to grab. They're pretty slippery. And I finally yeah. turned on my light and I found one on the beach. So I put him in my bucket and I was really proud of myself because I found one. And that usually means there's going to be more. There wasn't any more. We didn't see any more. And we're like, oh, this is going to be another one of those nights. And I kept him alive. I thought, let's just put him back. So I'm getting ready to tip him out into the water. And my headlamp, which I turned back on, shone across a little stretch of water in front of us. And I see it's like flickering on the beach. They're all on the other side, if you can see them over there on the beach. See the little speckly things are all shining. Those are all our grunion, but they're all on the other side of the bank. Look at them. Hundreds of them. We're just on the wrong side. They're just across from us, about 40 yards, and there's tons of them. But you have to cross some pretty deep water to get to them. It's like a little freshwater outlet that uh, it's pretty deep. It's probably about like four foot deep in some places. So and we were like, oh no, you know, we're just gonna have to let it go this time. And then Leroy kept looking at it and he kept putting his hands on his hips. And finally he said, you know what? I'm just gonna, let's see how deep it is. And so he w started walking in and then he hesitated a little bit. And I was worried about how deep it was gonna be. And then he finally came back and Leroy, he started to, he said, you're just you. gonna go for it. <laughs> So he took off his hoodie, handed me all his wallet and keys and everything else, and he, he went for it. And you just started tearing it up, just chasing them down the beach. I'm stuck on this side where they're not. Go, buddy, go. Oh, man, there's tons of them over there. He's going as fast as he can. He was, he was chasing them down the beach. I was just hooping and hollering. You are a rock star. What'd you get? Holy kittens. Not bad. Enough for a feed. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been there a couple of times and we didn't get any. And I said, no, I wanted to definitely make a, a video sh show you how that I used to cook them. I used to cook them for my mom and her friends, all the little Japanese ladies that come to my restaurant. So um, it's been a while since I've done this. So, but it, it's kind of it's kind of nice that we're doing it because it's bringing all the memories of my mom. You know, she used to she was in her 70s. She was running down the beach, and it took her two hours to catch one. <laughs> That's what they look like. They almost kind of look like that little smelt that you'd catch on a sabiki rig, but from what I heard, they you cannot catch grunion. They they eat plankton only. And that's the way it is. So what we're gonna do is this is I'm gonna show you how I clean it. These things, as you can see, they do have scales. And I don't like the scales in my food. It just for a better mouth feel, you know, a better better uh, when you bite into it. I don't think biting into scales is probably a good thing. Some of the guys don't take them off, but I do. We got the grunion clean, so what I'd like to do is pull that fin back and cut straight down. And then go through the anal part here and just cut. I'll just cut his in innards out and then we'll take his innards out just like this. And then I just kind of rub back and forth. You'll see like a black, like a liner on the inside of their, on the inside of their stomach cavity and I like to just take that out. It just doesn't look nice. 
Now this grunion, for most people, be ready to go, just like it is. They fry it whole, they'll batter it and fry it. But I like to butterfly mine. Cut right on the edge here, okay? You kind of want to make sure you don't cut through the back and get where it, you'll hear the bones and you're just cutting the rib bones. Okay, go down a little bit more and you can actually open him up, run the knife down either side of the, uh, the backbone. So when you go on either side of the rib cage, you know, or excuse me, the backbone, you can just reach down here and pull it right out. Okay, and then when I get to the tail, I don't like to cut the tail off, I just cut the backbone because I want a handle on my, my fish. And then I do like to take the rib bones out, so I put a little pressure on the, the ribs. You can see the ribs right there. And I do take those out as well. And then I cut it just a little shy of the bottom because there's a little fin right there in the bottom. And I don't want to eat that part. See the little fin right there? To me, I think I like it this way because like I said, I did it for my mom so many years and her friends and you know they were elderly Japanese women. And then I just kind of do a couple things over there. And then there you have it. That is a butterfly grunion. And with the magic of TV. <laughs> I already have quite a few done already. It took me a little while, but we're ready to cook. If you want really good results on your tempera, you need to have ice cold water. Ice cold water when you mix your batter is the key. You don't want to overmix it because when you overmix it, it's a flour. You activate the glutens and glutens makes things chewy. You don't want chewy, you want crunchy. I actually have some tempura sauce here that I made. The tempura sauce, you want it mildly sweet, so it has sugar. It has mirin, which is a sweet cooking sake. It has soy sauce, and it has Japanese, uh, what we call uh, Japanese fish stock pellets, or we call it hondashi, and what it is is it's a, it's a fish stock that comes in pellet form. You can buy it. It's for all kinds of soups and stuff. Actually for miso soup as well. So um, that a little bit of that in there, so it gives it a little bit more hearty flavor. You see, I'm waiting it to the very end to mix my batter because the longer it sits, it gets warm and you want that ice cold. Okay, as you see, it's getting up there. I'm gonna turn it back down a little bit because it's, uh, it's getting about 360. It's about perfect. The batter is just, you, I bought this from the grocery store in bond you can see it everywhere it's just a tempera batter mix but uh, it does have like corn starches and kind of stuff like that and uh, I think it has like powdered egg powdered egg is nice to have in there because it makes it crunchy so you're gonna see me just add a little bit of water here and there and I'm gonna make this to the consistency oops I want all that ice in there but that's okay ice will be okay it'll just keep my batter cold because that won't stick you want it kind of like the consistency a little bit less than uh, pancake batter. Okay. And as you can see, I'm not over mixing it. And it'll get a little lighter when the ice starts to melt. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start taking these grunion fillets, or these butterfly grunion, and we're going to dredge them in the cornstarch. And the cornstarch has two things that it does. It it makes it crispier, but it also helps the batter stick to the filet better. And then we're just gonna lightly batter these, make sure they're completely covered, except for the tail. You don't need the tail. And then when that gets to temperature, we're gonna lay it away from you. And then we're gonna lay it that way. Because we won't want it to curl up as much. It'll stay flat if we do it that way. So away from you and you kind of like pull back. And then what we do is we take a little bit of the batter and we drizzle it over the top. We kind of spray it on top like this and it adds like little crunchies here and there because the batter will adhere to the, to the fish. 
and it'll make it like have like little crunchy sticking all over it. Doesn't take long to cook these fish. Doesn't take long at all. So you're, what you're looking for is a nice kind of a, a little bit of a browning, not too much, not too much browning on the tempera. Set it. You just need the batter to set. I like to turn it over a little bit just to see the cooking process. I don't want to get too brown. It should be nice and light. So we're just going to pull them out and let them drain a little bit. Like this. I'm going to take my little tempera strainer because I don't want these things. The longer they sit in there, they'll just keep continue to cook and turn brown. And then the next time you do a, a, a batch, all these little brown things will stick to your whatever you're cooking. And uh, I don't want that. Okay, here's the first batch of grunion right. tempera. So you go first because we've all had an easier day than you have. So. Oh, yep. you guys had a hard day getting this, a hard night getting this. Hey, next year. Mm. That's very good. That's not bad, huh? Yeah. For such a little fish. It's got some good crunch to it. Yeah? Mm-hmm. It's got good flavor. The texture's really nice. A little bit on the softer side for uh -huh. texture. I don't taste any of the skin, which is good because I don't usually eat skin. Skin mm. is good for you. Mm. All right, good. Edward, try some. Okay. This is okay. Your, is it your first time eating a grunion? Yeah. This will be my first time eating a grunion. And your first time? I have never had yeah. a grunion before. Okay. Ooh, it's nice and hot. Mm hmm. Look at this. Okay. It's nice. <laughs> 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 mm. So you're right, Leroy. It's like there's it's not chewy. Now that ice bath really helps to make sure that it's just all crisp. All crunch, all mm -hmm. crunch. <clears throat> That's good. Cool. It is good, and it soaks up so well. Nicely. That's what you want. And it just enhances the flavors. Yeah. So I, I think it's it's delicious. It's wonderful because you can taste the fish. You know, there's a little bit of oil in there. Um, oh, the tempura oil. sauce just brings out the flavor. You know, you taste the tempura sauce, but it really brings out the flavor. If you just eat a piece without it, it's good but the tempura sauce just kind of makes it because you get that level of, again, it's that kind of umami, a little bit of sweetness, and it's just right. It's all those balances when you find it. And it's just good fish too. You know, there's not a lot to it. I mean, you get the little bit of the fish flavor, the crunch of the tempura. That's why I like to do it tempura style. I don't just like to throw them in a pan and fry them like that because there's no texture. You know, mm -hmm. if you just threw it in the pan and fried it, it would be mushy, I think. You can cook it other ways, but my, my favorite is tempura. I... So I'm glad I get to share it with you guys. And sushi, we'll get more in depth in sushi as we go along. You know, we'll, we'll get some different cuts mm -hmm. of fish or what have you um, in the channel. We're gonna do some steaks, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe a little yeah. surf and turf. We're gonna put out some neat stuff in the next, you know, few years, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, do, we'll do some catch and cooks, but we'll also do, explore other things that I have recipes for. So thanks for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. You're gonna see some really interesting and neat stuff coming down the line. So until then, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I, I hope I can impress you in the next one. So I'm, I'm trying. <laughs>